Welcome back to the Green Yoga Project, planting seeds for positive change. My name is Maya Mojo. Are you ready? Are you ready to zone out with Maya Mojo, learn about the permaculture zones, and how you can make your life a little more effortless and a little bit better? Well, let's go. Come on. Maybe I'll sell. Maybe I'll sell. Maybe I'll sell. So what do you think? This is zone number one. You can see the herb spiral behind me. The sun is starting to go down and the mosquitoes. Oh, the mosquitoes. So hence the hood. I'm just explaining myself right now. But you can see that I started a bed in the middle of my yard. I'm going to start killing the grass and putting raised beds because growing food is more important than pretty lawns, in my opinion. Um, and then around the tree behind me as well, you could see that I started putting mulch because in permaculture we mulch a lot because we really want to build up the soil. One of the challenges we're having right now um, is that we're losing a lot of topsoil. So just like nature does, we, we start to really mulch a lot and continue to build up the soil. So putting sheet mulch down before you um, make a bed. You could use cardboard, just recycled cereal box cardboard, you know, recycle as much cardboard as you can. It's awesome for that. And then just put a layer of straw. So straw, not hay, because hay has seeds in it. So you want to just get straw bales. Okay. But that's an awesome um, way to start mulching as well. And then you can see um, on the steps behind me, I have some lettuce planted and some kale. I have also some lettuce and some pots behind me. Um, and then you could see too, this right here is um, strawberries. So zone one is all of the things that you want to have very accessible and the things that require a lot of maintenance. So you're probably gonna be pruning and, you know, um, weeding in zone one a little bit more, might need more water as well. And then like you saw on the video, I'm working on this little um, salsa garden here. I have some tomatoes and peppers and peas actually, and actually some 
some cabbage. It's kind of a unique salsa garden, I suppose. Um, and then we're getting started. I say we, me and my one woman army at the moment. But you could see that I am horrible with the camera. So another thing you want to consider in zone one is where are you going to put your compost? So behind me I have a little compost pile that's really close to my house. It's near the exit out of my side door so then um, it's easy to access and I keep it just really simple. You know you just keep you could put waste from the kitchen and you could put greens or um, bark and I put um, straw on it as well. You could use wood chips. So it doesn't have to be like super fancy or like you don't have to think about it too much. Um, and then you saw in zone two get into the backyard more and you're going to see where I'm going to um, put the chickens. So I'm going to build a chicken coop. Hopefully I'll have a little help doing that. I'm not sure. But um, I'm going to build the chicken coop and the chickens will be there and I'd like to allow the chickens to, to be able to graze um, more than just in this local area. And then we're going to walk all the way back um, to where I started another little garden. So this is a little more in zone two. So zone two, you can see my, my pathway that I made. My neighbor gave me these um, pieces of like broken brick kind of thing. So I made a little path in this garden. Um, and again, you could see how I'm mulching a lot. Um, that's Those beds I'm gonna probably work a little bit more in the fall, but I just experimented. I, pl I planted some um, Brussels sprouts and broccoli, which are being eaten. I need to make a fence, which I'm working on. Um, but that's but that's in zone two, and that's coming along, you know? So it's a little, a little less t attention um, in zone two, a little less maintenance. And you just have to start to think too, the further away from the house, the harder it is to get to get water and things like that. So the things that need the less maintenance, then you could keep in zone um, three and four. And then zone five is technically just wild. So, so you could see behind me, I, I did put a wire um, and some posts to help start taming these blackberries. See, this is where the mosquitoes just just get to be atrocious. But um, so I started taming those blackberries so we could, you know, harvest them much more easily and make some jam. We're gonna call it. That's my jam. So um, yeah, I'm really excited. Thank you for joining me and watching the progress. So hopefully you understand a little more about. Um, the zones in permaculture and how you can relate it to your own um, yard and your own experience.